Hi, I'm Jake T. Water, and this is the Virtual Production Indie Film Guide. So welcome to part two of our two-part series on color space transforms. If you missed part one, I would definitely check it out. It goes over a lot of the problem we're trying to solve, the theory of color spaces, and uh, some of the background information that you might need in part two. But if you just want to get your hands dirty, welcome to part two. We're going to dive right in. Today we're going to be creating uh, a LUT using DaVinci Resolve that can transform from the Blackmagic native color space into something that OCIO can recognize, such as Rec. 709. So let's just dive right in. So I've opened a blank DaVinci Resolve project, and uh, we're actually going to use uh, the, colors, the color tools in here to create this color space transform and then save it out as a 3D LUT for our camera. Uh, so, but the first thing you should do, and I would highly recommend this, is import a piece of sample footage because DaVinci Resolve will be able to tell you what color space your camera is using. So I have my hard drives plugged in right now, and if I go over to them, I just took a sample shot of uh, Bob the head on a stick over there. And when I pull the footage in, now I, I'm in the, uh, what is this section called? The media section. So if I pull the piece of footage in and uh, I can look through here and it says input color space. If you're missing this, just right click and uh, you know go over and add input color space. But this tells me black magic design film gen one. So that's the color space that I'm starting at. And then rec 709 is gonna be the color space that I wanna go to. Uh, so let's go over to here, the timeline mode, and I'll, we're not going to use this clip in the end, but this clip is necessary uh, for this process to work. So I just added it into the timeline. Let me zoom in a bit. And you can see it's not very long. It's just a couple seconds. You don't need a lot of footage. And once that's there, now we want to go directly to the color tab. So in here, um, what we want to do is apply an effect to do this color space transform for us. And if you go over to uh, this open FX panel, and if it's not visible, just click it, then you can search for color space transform. Drag that onto the node that you have here. This should be out by default. And if it's not, uh, let's see, if I delete that, I just right click, add node, corrector. That's all you need to do. Uh, well, then you need to drag all this stuff together. There we go. So add your color space transform onto it and you can see this little FX thing has appeared. And then here are the settings for that color space transform. So uh, what we're gonna do here is set the input color space to whatever the footage was in. In this case, it was here, Blackmagic Design Film Gen 1. And then that's the, uh, the color space and then the input gamma should just be the uh, default one. So I think it's Blackmagic Design Film. There's also this 4K film, and I, I haven't been able to find uh, in, if I go back to media, like if I look through all the settings here, I don't see anything that tells me what like uh, gamma curve I'm using. And if I click in here, so I think we have to kind of make a bit of a guess. And for that, I'm just going to pick Blackmagic Design Film, because that's what it says in the camera. Now, let's pick an output color space. And we said we wanted Rec. 709, right? So let's go in and uh, scroll down to Rec. 709, and same thing over here. Uh, Rec. 709. I believe if you use Gamma 2.4, it would be the same thing. I think they're equivalent. And then uh, turn tone mapping off. We, we don't want DaVinci Resolve to do any tone mapping. Um, this last one, use white point adaptation. I don't really notice anything one way or the other, so I'm going to leave it. But I do, you do want to make sure these are unchecked. These apply OOTFs. Now you might say, well, this still doesn't look right. And you're totally correct because um, if I go to my project settings to my color management, Timeline color space rec 709. Oh, that should that should look correct then. Now something about the colors in the last clip just didn't look right to me. So after I finished the video, I went back and took a deeper look at how I'd set everything up. Uh, and just to make sure I wasn't going to make any mistakes, I actually recalibrated all of my monitors. I even fed this uh, chart 
through and I like measured it on all sides just making sure like the signal as it was coming out of the capture card wasn't being corrupted in any way. And uh, after I set up all of that and like measured these uh, color charts again, I did indeed find an error, but it wasn't where I thought. So I thought I had made an error. Let's go over to the color panel. So here's, a, here's another clip uh, that we're trying to do this uh, generate the LUT for. And the error was actually on the input color space and everything else was correct. So tone mapping off, uh, OOTF, all of that off. But it turns out that uh, the, the color space reported over here in the media tab is a lie. And if you go over to color, you can actually find out what's really going on by clicking on this raw camera here. And you might, you might get like, uh, it'll probably say camera metadata to start. And then I tried to look into what it was saying here and I couldn't get anything. So I opened up and clicked clip. And what I found was it was being like default set to this uh, Gen 4 uh, Blackmagic Design color space with Gamma Blackmagic Film. But if you go over here, there was nothing that matched that. So what I ended up doing was looking for Gen 4. And the only thing I could find that matched with this Pocket 4K Film Gen 4 and I set both of these to uh, this Gen 4, and immediately the colors looked better. Uh, the, I can usually tell if the colors are off because my green screen will have like a yellow hue to it when the colors are off, but this one looks perfect. Um, I played around with this OOTF and this inverse OOTF as well. Uh, in feeding a signal through this to the other displays, it seems like these should both be off. And for the course of this tone mapping, I just left it at is. The, the biggest thing we want to think about is what is OCIO going to do on the other side? So OCIO is going to expect Rec. 709 in both of these, and that's the most important part here. So from there, you can then right click on the clip and generate LUT and proceed as the rest of the video intends. But I did want to stop and just say, uh, maybe don't trust this. Uh, <laughs> it's either here or somewhere else. but. You know, you want to get this input space correct because otherwise the colors will look, will look off. And I guess this is also telling you, trust your gut on colors. If something about it looks off, it's probably off. You know what? I think it does. Okay, my bad. Um, so, so the, the reason I did, I, I wanted to check is that if your output color space doesn't match the timeline color space, when it goes to display it, it's going to look wrong. Now, when you create the 3D LUT, it, it doesn't matter. Like we're in a weird spot by creating this 3D LUT. Um, it isn't really what this piece of the tool was designed for, but it just does it so well. So uh, what we wanna do then is once we're happy with this color space transform is go over here and right click it, and then you can see generate LUT. Now for my camera, my camera accepts a 33 point cube. So that's what I'm gonna click. And then I'll just save this to my downloads folder and I'm gonna call this uh, Black Magic Design Film Gen 1 to Rec 709, save. So what we wanna do next is copy that file and I'm gonna right click on here and say copy the file. This is my cube that I just generated. And then go over to one of your uh, hard drives that you're gonna connect to your Blackmagic camera. So this is the one I'm gonna connect. And then you need to create this folder if it doesn't exist, which is 3D LUTs, all caps except S is lowercase. And then put the LUT that you wanna import over there. So I'm gonna paste this. And then I'm gonna rename it I'm going to take away all that nonsense at the end. Just Blackmagic Design Film Gen 1 to Rec. 709. All right, uh, that's all I need to do here. Uh, so let me head over to the camera. All right, so I'm going to take this uh, hard drive over to the camera. And I will install it. All right, so I've got the hard drive connected to the camera here. It's going in through the USB cable and let me turn the camera on. All 
All right, so here's uh, here's the camera. It's on. Uh, you know, I have the scene. I have Bob the the floating head in the background. Hey, Bob, how's it going? And you can see that he's being filmed here. And this is just displaying the normal like uh, filmic color space. That's why everything kind of looks washed out. It looks more vibrant in real life. So what we want to do is click on the menu and then go to LUTs, which is the last menu here. And then there's nothing in here right now. I got to import the LUT I just made. So I want to import and then this can either be on the card or the external drive. So I want to make, make sure you've clicked external drive and then you should be able to see this one here. That's the file we just created, the 33 point cube. So we want to import it. And then here we go. So I would select this, hit check. And then now that LUT is basically active. So let me go over to record. Now remember, I don't want to apply this LUT to, uh, to the video recorded on the, on the local SSD, the one here. I want that to still be like raw, highest, widest gamut possible. So where is it? In here, apply LUT in file. Make sure that is off, otherwise you're, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. But if we go over to monitor, you can see uh, I've got the LCD Click on HDMI and you want to make sure display 3D LUT is selected. And now what's going to happen is this is the HDMI cable. This is going to be sending out Rec. 709 now. Now, if the camera isn't recording in the Blackmagic film color space, then if you apply a film to Rec. 709 transfer, it's just going to be nonsense. So make sure you are uh, here. If I go back to the main page, make sure I am in... Here, make sure you're doing the film in the dynamic range. If you have one of these, then your LUT is going to be wrong. So I'm in film. Uh, let's go back to monitor. Everything looks good. And then I believe if I click apply, like show LUT on this display, now have a look. I think it looks much more like the scenes are matching. So this is probably a Rec. 709 or sRGB display. So the color should be displaying correctly now. Now let's go have a look at uh, what the computer is seeing. All right, what I'm gonna do is open Blackmagic Media Express. And uh, I know that this is coming in over my deck link. So uh, click this login capture button and then up here on device, click whichever deck link port uh, you, you've got it being sent to. So there it is. Uh, so the exposure, like it's a little dark. I don't think I adjusted the exposure, but let me turn the light on. All right, that looks much better. So to me, I mean, I don't know how it looks, you know, uh, after being compressed, sent over YouTube and then viewed on random screens, but on my screen, this looks pretty good, especially if I look at the color, uh, the color bars on this chart. So uh, in, so yeah, this takes care of, sending, uh, having the camera now send a Rec. 709 signal out. And what I'm going to do in another video is I'm capturing that in Unreal, and then now I can use OCIO to convert that to sRGB linear. The reason I didn't straight up convert from sRGB linear in, in the camera using the LUT is I want to be able to view this on a monitor kind of in the intermediary, and I want it to look good. I want to be able to like eyeball whether the colors are correct or the exposure and stuff like that. So that's why I'm using Rec. 709 there. Now you can uh, go back to Resolve. Now you can go back to Resolve and you can use this technique for pretty much anything. Uh, if you had different color spaces that you wanted to change here, you can just set them to whatever. And when you export that LUT, it's gonna go from the input color space to the output. And now this is a color space transform. So, uh, you know, you can use and abuse this knowledge. Anyway, that's part two. If you haven't seen part one, go back. I talk all about the theory of this and why, you know, these cameras are using log color space in the first place. Uh, also check out our website, Virtual Production Indie Film Guide, vpifg.com. There's lots of articles about this and other topics and you'll see what comes next. But thank you for joining us.